Greetings in the name of Jesus. Um, I was just feeding my son. Uh, while I was feeding him, uh, this thought occurred in my heart. A lot of people are looking for peace. And there is no peace. They have tried everything. Um, you know, when you're worried about so many things and uh, everything that is happening in our nation, around the globe, a lot of uncertainties, especially last year has been very difficult for a lot of people in our nation. And um, I mean, what can you do? People are overdosing on drugs. Um, you know, you max out on your Adderall and your Xanax and, you know, whatever else you, you take. Uh, people try out yoga. Um, and folks, those of you who are doing yoga, um, especially Christians, I know, I know I may get a lot of heat for this, but um, I have to be open about this. And you have to understand that yoga is not just a breathing exercise. You have been misguided. And please do your research before you start commenting and saying, oh, you know, you don't know nothing about yoga. Listen, I'm an Indian, okay? I grew up there uh, before I moved to UK and then here in the US. So I know what I'm talking about. Um, it's a part of their meditation. It's part of their worship. Uh, in Hindu religion and Buddhism, you know, and you're opening yourself up to demons. Or they say, oh, you know, empty your thoughts and everything. Yeah, you're basically just opening yourself up to demons. Please stop doing yoga. That will not give you peace. They'll tell you, oh, this is just a breathing exercise. Baloney, it's not breathing exercise. It's nonsense. And Christians, you definitely don't want to do it. And to those of you who are not believers... Um, and you're doing yoga, let me tell you, you're opening yourself up to spirits. In, in Christian theology, we call it demons. And you, you can call, oh yeah, I'm able to breathe better and this and that. Listen, that will not give you peace. Now I'm going to tell you what will give you peace in reality, okay? In the book of Psalms, in the Bible, um, the psalmist states, I meditate on your law day and night. Oh, uh, so David, are you saying that reading the Bible can give me peace? Give it a shot. Try reading the Gospels, okay? These are the um, words that Jesus said and the things that Jesus did while he was on earth. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, just read them. And tell me if you find a difference. Another thing that you can do, you can pray. Pray to Jesus, Pray to the God of the Bible. Pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, you have to come to the source of peace. When you're truly, if you really want peace, if you're really looking for peace, if you are really seeking peace, if you want peace, you have to come to the source. And the source of peace and tranquility is God himself. There is no one else, no other things in this world that can give you peace. You can have all the money in the world. Your career is set. Children are doing well. Everything is going okay, but you still don't have peace. Jesus said, I give you peace. And the world cannot take it and the world can, because the world does not give it. This peace comes from God. He gives you the peace. And you will be at peace if you have Jesus in your life. Elsewhere in the Bible, I think it's Paul writing, you know, it's a peace that passeth all understanding. So people of the world don't get it. When Christians are calm, when the world is going crazy, when Christians are chill, why? Because the faith and the hope in future, what God has prepared, the things that are about to happen, the amount of stuff we know from the scriptures, it's just mind-boggling. Nothing that is happening in the world um, is shaking us. Because we know the things are going to get from bad to worse. But there is a future that Jesus is preparing that is glorious and beautiful. And that is about to happen very soon. So that's why you find a lot of Christians who are really um, have their foundation in the Word of God. They are secure. They're not too worried about anything, any changes that are happening. Now you may ask... Um, how do I have Jesus in my life? How do I fix my situation? Here's what you can do. In book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38, 
you know, Peter is addressing the crowd who is asking the same question, like, what must we do? And he says, repent of your sins. And how do you repent? You know, a lot of people say, oh, just say, oh, Lord, please forgive me of all my sins. Please don't do that. You know when God knows it, you don't mean it. You want to be specific. Say, Lord, I'm sorry about this particular sin. I want a freedom from this particular bondage, this particular sin that is. I, and I'm repenting. Repenting is basically a U-turn. You're going in this direction towards the world and towards the sin. And you're making a U-turn. You're coming back to God. So you repent of your sins to God. Okay? And you may have done something against people, but you're repenting towards God because you are violated His laws. Okay? And the next thing is, you believe in the Lord Jesus. So repenting, believing kind of goes hand in hand. You put your faith in Jesus. So what does that mean? He, you make Him the Lord of your life. You're saying, Lord, I believe. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins. And all your sins, Jesus is taking the punishment for your sins, setting you free. Because you're not just going set, you know, God is not saying, oh, all right, you're free now that you ask for him. No, there is a price. But the price is already paid by Jesus. So all you're doing is basically putting your faith in Jesus. The work that he did on the cross to pay for your sins. And the next thing is you, you're baptized in water. Basically, you know, washing away your sins as a new birth. You're born again. A new nature comes into you. You're a new creation. Your body's still the same. Your spirit is new. Okay? Next thing you do is you ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ask for God's Holy Spirit to come and dwell in you. That will bring you a real peace. The Holy Spirit. There are false spirits. There are demon spirits. But you want to ask specifically, God, give me the Holy Spirit. Pray about it. Think about it. Think, it. think about this seriously. You know, a lot of people question the Bible. They question the person of Jesus. Listen, whether Jesus existed or not is, is a non-question. Okay? Um, end of the day, you want to find out if he was really the Messiah. And read the Bible. Get hold of a Bible. Start reading it. Find out. There are other people who have investigated this. I always recommend Josh McDowell, his book about, you know, the validity of the Bible. Get a hold of it. Read if you're not too sure. Or... The most simplest way, a childlike faith, you ask God, God, if you are real, Jesus, if you are real, please speak to me. And I tell you, God is more interested in you coming to him than you are in coming to God. The scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him will not perish but have eternal life.